The Assembly will hear a statement by His Excellency Enele Soseni Sopoaga, Prime Minister of Tuvalu. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency? I have great pleasure in welcoming the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, His Excellency Enele Soseni Sopoaga. I invite him to address the General Assembly. Madam President, Excellencies, on behalf of the government and people of Tuvalu, I bring, bring greetings to the United Nations. We offer our prayers to the tragic loss of lives due to acts of violence here in our host country, the United States, and worldwide. Let me now add on Tuvalu's own commendations to His Excellency, the President of the 71st General Assembly, Mr. Peter Thompson of Fiji for taking the helm of this session. While we appreciate the enormity of the task placed upon Fiji, we also have full confidence in His Excellency's and Fiji's ability to steer us through the troubled waters of global oceans. As the smallest member of the United Nations family, Tuvalu continues to hold dear to our hearts the noble values and principles of the United Nations. And also, our stern hope that out of the great halls of the United Nations, peoples of all races and creed, of all countries, big and small, particularly those whose very existence is threatened by human-induced strife, conflicts, and especially by the impacts of climate change, will be saved. Madam President, over the past few days, the leadership of this great body was put to the test. Could we leaders provide the vessel, the canoe, buoyant enough to protect and save even the smallest islands of the planet? Will this United Nations canoe enable us to rise with the tide of progress and to sail through the surges of environmental insecurity and climate change? Or will it sink us? Tuvalu is immensely encouraged by the actions of world leaders this week, by the strong leadership of our Secretary General, and by the goodwill that continues to prevail of humanity. The adoption of the New York Declaration on Migrants and Refugees and the compounding commitment to the Sustainable Development Goals uh, 2030 Agenda and the many countries that have ratified the Paris Agreement on Climate Change have given us hope and renewed trust and confidence in the work of this body, the United Nations, and its ability to rise to our hope for the security, progress, and protection of our human rights. But this said, Madam President, we must deliver on our words. Tuvalu applauds the strong leadership from the United States and other major greenhouse gas emitters, and also by the small island developing states, all of them from the Pacific Islands, as well as other regions, Caribbean, Indian Ocean, to ratify the Paris Agreement on climate change. But this is not enough. We must ensure that the Paris Agreement enters into force. It must be fully elaborated and operationalized as early as possible on real adaptation and mitigation work. Madam President, at all nations like Tuvalu, Kiribati, the Marshall Islands, the Maldives, Tokelau, and all other seats, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, Samoa, all those in, in Pacific seats regions, including the Pacific, are already suffering the impacts of climate change and sea level rise, and are predicted by many of total extinction if nothing is done urgently. This cannot, this cannot and must not be allowed to happen. 
it would be shameful for humanity to allow such eventuality to happen. Those of us sitting in this hall, it must be shameful on all of us if we do not do actions to stop this happening. Tuvalu therefore appeals that our collective efforts under the Paris Agreement must lead to keeping global temperature increase to below 1.5 degrees Celsius relative to pre-industrial time. Not only to keep up with the objective of our climate change convention, but necessary to save us and save our future survival. We pray that through these great halls of the United Nations, our humble voice will be amplified by the conscience and goodwill of humanity for real urgent actions. We must also ensure that our response on people displacement and movements takes account of the protection of the human rights of those people displaced by the impacts of climate change. We need a legal framework for this work to ensure human rights protection and security. Tuvalu has proposed for a United Nations resolution on the establishment of such a legal process. On these great achievements, I pay tribute on behalf of Tuvalu to the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, for his steadfast stewardship and commitment to the noble principles of the United Nations Charter and to the people of the world. We have achieved tremendous strides under his leadership. And as he leaves us in the United Nations, I wish him well, I wish his family well in his plans in the future. Madame President, Session 71 of the General Assembly is no different to past sessions, except for urgency. Tuvalu welcomes the Secretary General's report and pledges its support to the theme, a universal push to transform our world through the SDGs. However, as noted in Secretary General's report, there is a real need for urgent actions to address the growing multiplicity and complexity of global challenges. It is vitally important that we address gender equalities and also ensure the rights of people with disabilities. On peace and security, we applaud the work of the United Nations on many fronts and encourage further work to find long-lasting solutions to the long-drawn conflicts in Syria, Ukraine, and other troubled spots of the world. The loss of precious lives and misery is totally unacceptable and must be stopped. We also encourage, and we, are, we welcome, and I encourage, the normalization of diplomatic relations between Cuba and the United States. However, we believe it is important for security and peace for those relations to be translated pragmatically into other areas of cooperation, recognizing, of course, Cuba's humanitarian support and contribution, including its support to Tuvaluans on scholarships and training that we have tremendously benefited from. The preemptive and provocative actions displaced by the People's Democratic Republic of Korea against the Republic of Korea and its potential implications against peace and security of the world, including our own Pacific Ocean region, are totally unacceptable. We deplore these actions and urge for urgent actions to have these acts or to move this act into a complete issue at the earliest opportunity. We are also concerned with the continuing denial of the rights of the 24 million people of the, United, of the Republic of China on Taiwan to be readmitted as a UN member and to participate in the work of the United Nations and its specialized agencies. We must recognize that Taiwan is a vibrant democracy and we have seen and witnessed them having recently elected and inaugurated a new president. 
Taiwan's genuine efforts in supporting various developmental and humanitarian other undertakings, including those to support Tuvalu and many developing countries, needs to be recognized as well. And as we roll out the implementation of the SDGs, Madam President, Taiwan's direct and indirect support will greatly help in leveraging existing partnerships. Taiwan is already involved in the work of many specialized UN bodies, like the, w, the w, uh, World Health Assembly, WHO, and ICAR. We truly believe, therefore, that Taiwan must be given international recognition for active membership and participation in all international bodies of the United Nations. In the same way, the principle of self-determination must all be respected and honored. The violation of human rights in West Papua and their desire to achieve self-determination is a reality, a reality that this great body, this great hall, cannot continue to ignore. It must take this into account. It must not allow actions in the guise of principles of non-interference and sovereignty as reasons for inaction. The UN must act on this issue and find a workable solution to give autonomy to the indigenous peoples of West Papua. On development, we are pleased that we now have united, a united front, our Sustainable Development Goals Agenda 2030, underpinned by the foundational principles of interdependence, universality, and solidarity. No country, big or small, rich or poor, can do and meet its SDGs alone. We must collaborate in durable and genuine partnerships on all the sustainable development goals to benef benefit us all. Our urgent focus, however, must be for the individuals at the margins of our societies who can easily be left behind, honoring their basic inequities and insecurities with practical and timely uh, remedies. We are indeed their beacon of hope, and our Agenda 2030 must deliver in guaranteeing the fundamental rights and welfare of all citizens, current as well as future generations. Madam President, our unity however, is built on diversity. The United Nations can only be as effective as the sum of our positive national and regional actions put together. We are grateful, therefore, for the work ending or resulting in a Samoa pathway on small islands developing states, and believe that for seats like Tuvalu not to be left behind it is critical that the strategy is fully implemented with proper provisions for seats in all UN agencies and programs. Tuvalu has recently launched its own national strategy uh, for sustainable development called Tikakenga Tolu, which means progress in Tuvalu. To respond and domesticate the Agenda 2030, Tikakenga Tolu is based on the theme protect and save Tuvalu. And it's based on the principles of local ownership and leadership of development, inclusiveness in decision making, and also on mutual trust and respect in cooperation with partners. We acknowledge the invaluable contribution of development partners that have been working with Tuvalu, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, European Union, Republic of China on Taiwan, and all other bilateral and multilateral partners for their kind support to Tuvalu. Our venture under the TK3, or Tikaki Ngatolu, will ultimately focus on building the resilience of Tuvalu to reducing its unique vulnerabilities on its lands, oceans, biodiversity, and more importantly of all, on its people through education and training and capacity building. Tuvalu welcomes durable and genuine partnerships from the international community. 
All countries should advance together, though at a different pace, but progressively nevertheless. Each country must drive its own pursuits, befitting its own capabilities and circumstances. Madam President, fundamental gaps exist in the achievement of our Millennium Development Goals, especially in least developed countries that are also cities or small island developing states like my own Tuval. While poverty indices on human development in our countries may have been improved, our atoll nations will forever remain small and far from development. And our level of vulnerabilities and fragility will continue to present us with unique challenges, however well-intentioned and planned our plans may be. Special windows of opportunity, therefore, Madam President, for seats that also LDCs are needed. We must not repeat the shortfall that have left us in LDCs under MDGs. We must provide genuine partnerships to deal with the unique and peculiar challenges. President, on environmental security, irrespective of how well written and intentioned our, in, our national strategy for sustainable development are on B, our efforts and long-term survival and security will be seriously compromised unless urgent actions on climate change at all levels are made. In our view, the science of the course and the projections of efforts of climate change, of effects of climate change, including its threatening nature to the survival of people well over, especially in seats, have been well clarified in the plethora of documentation in the United Nations and now in the Paris Agreement. The time of talk is over. It is now the time to walk the talk and ensure its full elaboration and implementation. We must ensure our commitments under the Paris Agreement are all met. On our part, Tuvalu exerted, has exerted every effort to contribute our voice, however small, however low, at the global level. And we are proud to have been part of the negotiations on climate change ever since the Rio summits. And through thin and thick, and heat and cold, till the Paris COP21, with its success, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Tuvalu was amongst the first in the world to sign and ratify here in April the Paris Agreement. On the ground, we are not giving up. We will never give up. We are committed to our greenhouse gas remission, uh, emissions reductions, as we stated in our NDCs. And we are shifting to using 100% electricity generation from renewable energy by the year 2020. Tuvalu has also established a Tuvalu Climate Change Survival Fund using our own mega financial resources as a mechanism to show that we are serious in saving our people to remain forever in the islands. The Tuvalu Survival Fund is now also a catalyst to engage for meaningful partnerships with the world. On our, web, on our own, however, Madam President, we are left totally incapacitated to afford the immense cost of adapting to the impacts of climate change. In this respect, we are deeply grateful to the support that has come bilaterally and through the crop agencies, our regional organizations in the Pacific, and from other UN bodies in the Pacific, Asia and Pacific region and through the work, of course, of the Green Climate Fund and its board. Tuvalu is now one of the only two seats in the Pacific to have been approved funding for real adaptation work on the ground. We thank the United Nations Development Program for partnering with Tuvalu in the development of our proposal. And we also thank the GCF two co-chairs and board members and in particular, our own seats representation in the GCF board 
for all their kind appreciation and favorable consideration. While appreciative, there is an ongoing need to build our capacity at the national levels on project proposals, writing, and reporting. Let me assure the GCF board members and partners of Tuvalu's total commitment to ensuring the success of the approved project and of course, indeed, our full cooperation for further partnership in the future with GCF. Mr. President, we are also very appreciative of the assistance that have been forthcoming to Tuvalu following TCPAM in 2015. However, we believe there is a need to establish a more systematic mechanism or way of responding to disasters in small island developing states, particularly those in the Pacific. We have proposed for the establishment of a Pacific Climate Change Insurance Facility to help us get the assistance on time of disasters uh, without having to wait for partners, partnerships and responses from partners. We welcome the, uh, the, the Oceans Conference to be held next year in the United Nations. Pacific Island countries were instrumental in ensuring that oceans were included in sustainable development goals because the oceans are we and that is the basis of our life in the Pacific. Collective action to address illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing, ocean acidification and protection of biodiversity beyond the limits of national jurisdictions and reforms to the UN law of the sea to ensure that our rights to protect the, the natural resources of our islands are properly addressed. President, the oceans ahead in the wake of the United Nations are rough and tough. More than ever, we need more moral and soul searching other than just regurgitating good governance and political solutions. More than ever, we also need the helping hand of our mighty God to guide us in our work. We must bring God to the center of our human and United Nations endeavors to ensure reaching our destiny with success. Next week, Tuvalu will celebrate the, 10th the 30th anniversary of our independence. Please partner with Tuvalu and we with God in our journey forward. Madam President, I wish you all the best in our pursuits of this session and reiterate that Tuvalu fully believes in multilateralism and we believe as a state we cannot survive without our United Nations. If we save Tuvalu and sit through the SDGs and particularly on the goals of climate change and oceans, we will save the world. May God bless the United Nations. May, may God bless Tuvalu. Tuvalu, Modiadu. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of Tuvalu for the statement just made, and I request port protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear a statement by his